Now, this is a very interesting topic. Why do people in the Middle East have some of the lowest rates of cancer if we compare this to the entire world? If we take the average of how many people get cancer in the entire world, it's 198 people out of every 100,000 people get cancer. Now, if we take a look at individual uh, parts of the Middle East, we have Saudi Arabia, 96 people get cancer out of 100,000. Yemen, 97 people out of 100,000. Oman, 104. Qatar, 107. UAE, it's 107, and Kuwait is 116 people out of 100,000 people get cancer. So you can see, if you live in these countries, you have a much less risk of getting cancer. Let's compare this with Australia. 468 people out of 100,000 get cancer. They take number one, they get first place in getting cancer. Number two, Ireland is 374 people out of 100,000 people. Next one is Hungary, 368 people, okay, out of 100,000. And then United States, 352 people out of 100,000 people develop cancer. So, what is so unique about the Middle East? Well, number one, fasting, Ramadan. Now, Ramadan is a religious fast that extends over the course of one month. Now, that one month is just one month out of the entire year. What blows my mind is they're fasting right after sunrise to sunset. So they're usually eating before that and eating after that. So Ramadan is considered a type of intermittent fasting only for one month and produces a tremendous decrease in rates of getting cancer. That's quite remarkable. So why does fasting help with preventing cancer? Well, it starves cancer. Do you realize there's between 10 and 50 times more insulin receptors in a cancer cell versus a normal cell? What does that mean? That means that cancer cells have a very avid or greedy hunger for glucose because they have more receptors to eat glucose, okay? so. This is how they diagnose cancer through a PET scan. A PET scan identifies areas in the body that have a very high metabolism of sugar. So cancer loves sugar. And when you're fasting, you're not consuming sugar. All right, number two, autophagy. Fasting stimulates autophagy, which is a condition that helps to recycle old damaged proteins. It helps to recycle old damaged things like damaged mitochondria. And if we look at what cancer really is, it's damage to your mitochondria. When the mitochondria is damaged, the mitochondria then adapts its metabolic system to a different way of uh, dealing with energy. It ferments glucose. When you fast, you kick in this autophagy and you're recycling damaged mitochondria, which is going to decrease your risk for cancer. The third thing about fasting is that when you fast, you generate new immune cells. You strengthen your immune system. Your immune system becomes stronger. You generate more killer T cells, which directly kill cancer cells and viruses. And you also stimulate more helper T cells, which indirectly help reduce cancer. All right, next point about fasting. It's one of the best things to get rid of inflammation. Cancer tends to spread okay, migrate into areas of inflammation. So fasting is one of the most potent anti-inflammatories. So it's gonna reduce the risk of cancer being spread. Also, when you fast, you increase the antioxidant networks of the body. So these things that actually protect you against free radicals, free radical damage, like in the mitochondria, 
are improved or enhanced when you fast. So that's going to decrease the risk of getting cancer right off the bat. Fasting is one of the oldest therapies. Even Hippocrates uh, mentioned fasting quite extensively, and he had an interesting quote, but to eat when sick is to feed the illness, okay? So you, when you're ill, you don't want to eat very frequently. And he was considered like the foundational father of medicine.